Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus and today we're going to be working on a pair of Alden shoes. We're going to be refurbishing them, so come join us and check out how it's all done. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. All right, so I'm a little new to that whole intro thing there, but we've got these uh, Aldens that were shipped into us. They're Shell Cordovan uh, by, from one of our good customers and good friends. I don't, I'm not going to mention his name. I don't know if he'd want that, but he's a gentleman that's uh, part of a couple of groups online that we're in as well. Um, Al Alden Enthusiasts and uh, Alan Edmond and Waxton Diet as well. There's a few great groups and he found us through there and he's uh, been out here. He's from out of state, but he's come out to visit us for our shoe shine party. Our first one that was kind of a bust, but learned a lot of great things that day. So today what we're going to be doing, sorry, I got to sharpen up my knife here. We're going to be resoling these with a premium grade JR Leather Sole. And JR Leather, of course, is of the highest quality for leather soles because it is oak bark tanned, so it doesn't take on any moisture or salt like your average leather shoe would. <laughs> and it has a much denser pore structure, so it makes it a lot more durable. On average, they last two to three times longer than original factory soles and um, even our house grade leather. Our house grade leather is about the same equivalent as what a factory sole would be, but uh, the JR sole is a huge upgrade. Um, our house grade even too, it's a bit of an upgrade for some shoes too. There's some brands that don't do so well. Now these shoes were a uh, thrift, so thrift store purchase, which it, he got them for, I don't know if you could see that, six bucks. Shell Cordovans. I've been trying to hunt down this pair of shoes in my size. Unfortunately, they are not my size. And I've just been wanting a pair badly. You know, I like, I mean, I could go out and get a brand new pair, but when I go out shopping for shoes like these, I like to find the ones that are used and wore out so I can refurbish them. But there's the catch. I never have time to refurbish any of my own shoes. It's like that old uh, story with the shoemaker with no shoes. We got priorities, and your shoes are priority for us. Our sh then goes our family's shoes, our children, our wives, spouses, and then go finally our personal shoes uh, where is it there it is now in most cases a lot of you have seen that um, I use this here thinning agent for the adhesives unfortunately because these are shell cordovan um, any form of solvent is not good for shell cordovan because it's not actually a leather it is a membrane and solvents are very damaging and even though I'm not pouring it on the upper of the shoe at all it can still absorb into that and it makes a kind of like a weak point if it absorbs into a certain spot. Let me just angle this for you guys a little bit. There we go. Sorry. But uh, we don't wanna we don't wanna make a weak spot in these shoes. So it takes a little more effort, but at least it'll be done right then that way. No. Alden shoes, as I mentioned, they're one of my favorite shoes. They have very good builds. Now this is an older model, of course, because this one, and the reason why I say that is, well, not an older model, but it's an older pair. The reason why I say that is because this one, actually, no, this isn't. I thought this was one of their leather stacked ones, but um, this is a composite heel base, unfortunately, which aren't all that great. Um, take the nails out. Okay, all the nails are out. You now, most of the time, we like to keep the original heel bases, but 
These uh, these could use a little bit of an upgrade. I didn't tell him that I would upgrade the heel base for him, that, but we'll go ahead and do that and we'll put some stacked leather heel blocks on here that will definitely give an extra bit of uh, improvement on him. That's one of the downsides I've noticed with uh, with the Aldens that they they still use that composite. But at this point I'm just taking my knife here like this and I'm cutting through the stitches around the Goodyear welt. Again, because I am not uh, using any kind of solvents on it, it doesn't glide as easily. And we got a solvent in, in the shoes, like the thinner here. It deactivates those glues and makes things so much more easier. But luckily, these shoes are well constructed, so it's uh, fairly easy to do. To cut through, it cuts like butter. There we go. Now, Aldens are not full 360 welt as well. 360 welt means that they would be stitched all the way around back here. There are very, very few shoes that I've come across with that, and Allen Edmond, of course, is the most infamous one. But still, definitely not a bad design. They they put nails in the back here. They're clinch nails, and then when the heel block goes on, you saw those nails sticking out there. Those are gripper nails. So they really secure that heel area nicely. But what they have on here instead on the back end, I don't know if I can get this sole off for you, you'll see there's what's called a heel ren. Okay. There we go. Got that off. So this is the heel ren right here. It's just that little other piece and it keeps it keeps the shape of the heel base back here um, and it also works as a little bit of a buffer too which is definitely definitely needed when you got something a little bit of a harder heel block as well on there pull out some of these nails staples and at least the shank is intact now this that's interesting it's a little bit of an older one there but at least it's a steel shank. Some companies haven't been putting shanks in their shoes. Some have been putting fiberboard shanks and wood ones and just not that great, unfortunately. But yes, shank is this steel piece right here. So for those of you who may not know, take off the heel ren we're going to, have to clean it up and renail it usually they just have a few small staples holding it down and then the rest of it they rely on it with those gripper nails that run complete or the clinch nails that run through the sole and then the gripper nails that run through the sole and heel base which holds it up fine but you know we'll be reattaching this guy gotta make sure we got the ren marked up so this is the left shoe now the runs are usually usually almost identical. I mean they may be off by like half a millimeter, but I still would rather make sure that they go into the exact same shoe. Left one goes into the left, right one goes into the right. That's cork. It's pretty good in there. It's holding up pretty nicely. It's real nice actually. But we're still going to be replacing it because it's got a little bit of dry rot going on over here at the toe area. On top of that, these weren't his shoes, of course, since he bought them at, the, at a thrift store. Some of them. So we have to make sure to clean out all that old uh, cork that's absorbed old sweat. And, you know, it's also got the imprint of the previous owner's foot in there. And, and we're going to be um, trying to even all that out to help the break-in process a little bit better. I mean, it's not going to be a full 100% like a brand new shoe fitting but it's definitely gonna be closer to that so we're gonna make sure to do that now the other thing is also we are going to replace get it out the little heel pad insoles here so these are just worn all 
out and everything right there and the gentleman who's the new owner of these shoes wanted to have something that showed that they were still Alden's and with the JR sole unfortunately you don't get that but he contacted Alden and they were very easy to work with very fast and they shipped these out to us some original ones with new little cushion heel pads here so we'll be putting new ones in here definitely definitely cool I gotta I gotta message these guys to get some extras of these in stock as well because that would definitely be a nice feature to have for their customer that owns a pair of these shoes cushioning out too now we take out the old insoles of course because we have to get in there and nail everything we've got to make sure to see if there's any nails sticking out or anything but it uh, doesn't look like they they have anything there all right now with Alden's now they do nail their heel bases at least with this one here from the top a lot of times a lot of shoe manufacturers they nail nail their heel bases from the inside right here and this particular shoe is not one of them so they nailed it from up top over here and it looks like they've got one two three four five six seven nails which is uh, definitely a bit of an improvement compared to a few other brands out there that I won't mention some of you who are avid shoe enthusiasts know what I'm talking about but anyways take that off now I'm taking off the top lift as well because I want to make sure I get the same height at least of the new heel block that we're putting on so I like to save them to make sure I get it as close as possible without uh, without adding the adding the worn in features of the heel block of course but anyways I'll uh, skip through taking apart this other shoe the rest of the way so I'm not wasting your time too much. I'm gonna go ahead and sand out all this old cork. I'm gonna re-cork it all, um, put the shank back in. Well, before I actually put new cork in there, I'm gonna, of course, pull out all the old stitches here where the welt is, which which is one of the fun parts. So I'll let you guys at least see that that part. I like I like the stitch puller. It does really really nice to remove it. But uh, some, sometimes it gets most of the stitches and sometimes it doesn't, so we gotta pull out the rest by hand. But once it's time to do that, I'll, I'll bring you guys back on board with the video. So we'll see you back here in just a little while then. All right, so we got the cork out of there. It's just a small amount of residue usually left behind. That's usually normal like that there. If we try to sand out too far, we actually really sand into the um, base there and we definitely don't want that to happen. But at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pull the old stitches. We've got our attachment here on one of our shine machines and it has these little ridges that basically just pull all the old stitches for us. So we'll go ahead and get started. So we got majority of the old stitches pulled. There's a few spots that still have a little bit, so we'll have to pull the rest out by hand. Um, we don't want to press too hard on this attachment here, otherwise it really takes away a lot of the, um, the welt. It can potentially damage it. So we have to be careful, in other words, when we're doing this without applying too much pressure. Otherwise, I've seen some, some people who've accidentally pressed just too hard getting a stubborn stitch out and they just damage that whole welt. Um, sometimes in some cases the upper two. But just a little light going through on this and then the rest of it gets pulled by hand. Um, I won't show this all on camera but I'm gonna go ahead and spray down the bottom section here with a, a desalt or vinegar mixture to help soften this up and I'm gonna stick it on one of our presses to kind of press out this interior here a little bit because again these uh, shoes were used for this gentleman so um, it doesn't have the imprint of his foot doesn't do too much as far as uh, redoing that imprint on the inside but it helps some so during the break-in process when he's re-breaking them in it'll be a lot easier to do than having to feel someone else's lump or something on the inside 
And then afterwards, of course, I'll lay out the cork, put the shank back in, everything, start gluing all that up after I leveled out all the cork. And uh, yeah, I, I won't bother you with that portion of it, but when, when it's time to go ahead and trim things out, I'll see you guys then, all right? All right, everyone. So I just wanted to show you real quick. So the cork, we've got everything filled in now, sanded out. And I've got the soles kind of traced out roughly right there to make sure that it fits nicely. So we get that JR logo a little more centered. Now, the cork comes in sheets like this here. You know, and so it's not that hot cork method like some of you may have heard about. And the hot, hot cork method, really, there isn't much difference to it in other words for you as the consumer the difference is that it makes it easier during the mass production of shoes when you're mass producing shoes it makes it a lot quicker and easier than say cutting it out of sheet waiting for glues to sit and dry stick it and all that but for us cobbler shops it's not practical to have a hot cork machine basically it's not cost efficient one bit whatsoever i mean unless we were literally doing you know 40 50 pairs of these per day you know then that would definitely be worth it but we don't exactly do that much per day i mean i don't think any shop ever does that many full soles per day where they need to do the cork because we have all sorts of different shoes that we have come through and boots some that have corks some that don't some that need you know different types of materials or something so you know it's not practical but the hot uh, but the cork in general it's still the same uh, it comes out the same basically i actually prefer it this way just because the density is already predetermined by rollers on those sheets um, and so when you end up getting these you won't end up having that issue of it feeling too hard because that is one issue that I've heard a few times and seen with uh, shoes that have cork in them not necessarily just Alden's but a lot of other brands too you get a pair and maybe they had a new guy or you know even somebody that's been doing the same thing for many years they put a little too much cork in there and so they kind of force it they really force they compress that cork because once that cork settles in there next step is of course they start putting on the sole very quickly so it really compacts all that cork and makes it very hard um, so that's why i definitely prefer to use uh, the predetermined density already where we're not forcing it or anything in there but uh, yeah i just thought i'd show you guys that real quick on there um, i still gotta stick the shank in there because this was a over top shank it just lays over top some shanks they go underneath the cork some of them are actually sandwiched between cork pieces um, but this one was laying over top so i gotta put the, the shank back in uh, i still gotta do the heel ren also like that there that's oh, perfect that's for the left shoe anyways gotta put the heel run back on run some gripper nails or not gripper clinch nails i don't know why i always say that but clinch nails are just little brass tack nails like this that are designed to go into the material and when they hit this steel last that i have here they turn into a hook basically it makes it a lot more secure than if you just put little short tacks in there basically um, once i've got all that situated and everything then i'll go ahead and glue up the soles get them stuck together and i'll meet you guys back over at our machine when it's time to finally sand everything out i don't want to waste your time too much on it um, now like i said i did already go through with our press last with one of our lasts on our press and i sprayed the outside with a uh, desalter vinegar mixture that we have to help deactivate salts that may have been built up possibly from the previous owner and uh, during that process while i was sitting there as well i stuck it on that press and pushed it had it, the press push it down i think we had it set at about five uh not 500 maybe about 400 pounds roughly because i'm really trying to get that uh, material inside the leather to press out and that's before the cork goes on of course um, to get it all to work nicely so we'll go ahead and uh, continue on this and I'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, so I've got the sole on here. I've allowed it to cure for a while. I did forget to mention throughout the whole time, I have been spraying these down with a vinegar-based desalter as well on the uppers, uh, along with uh, having some <clears throat> shoe trees in there that have the split toe. I'm gonna take these out anyways. With a split toe like that, they're, uh, they're in order to kind of help with the um, creasing here. We have been also stretching these out a little back and forth, a little in between as well. Um, shell cordovan, it tends to stretch out, but 
takes a little little more i guess you can say so during that process kind of been going back and forth between the shoe trees and the stretchers but it seems like it's been helping a little bit with the creasing so the way i've been doing it i've got the shoe trees in here and then i spray it down with our bottle here that we have with uh vinegar and desalter mixed in it's blue this time usually we have the clear desalter but it's just different color with different brands and i take the back end of our uh you know little hammer here like this because it's got a really smooth handle on here and it's got a finished coating on it and just kind of massage it you could do a deer bone like most are familiar with you could also use a spoon as well so something just smooth and you know delicate in other words you don't want to use anything that's got texture on it where this hammer it's uh, nice and smooth on this handle my other hammer that i usually use that one's got a little bit of divots and everything so there's no way i would ever use that on the shell cordovan shoes <clears throat> but anyways uh now at this point these guys are ready to be trimmed up i've got the heel bases hang on let me grab them we've got the leather stacked heel bases right here that we're going to be putting on there and uh, we gotta sand those out I've, of course we're going to mark up where the heel bases will go i still have one of the original ones so i got to make sure that i get the right depth because i don't want to put it all the way in there like that in case the heel only comes up to about here so i want to make sure we get everything lined up properly and uh while i'm here also i'm going to go ahead and do the channeling on the sole as well so we'll go ahead and get started i got this new little washer on here so i'm gonna test it out and see how it's working for now but let's get started So I've got this one trimmed out. I almost completely forgot um, that before I do any kind of stitching or anything, I actually have to sand out the bottom and put the stain on here right now while we have it um, so that we don't have to do that and it shows through the colors a little bit better too. Don't know why I forgot to mention that. So I'm going to hold off on marking up the heel bases right now. So at this point it's uh, basically done for what we're doing right now. And we're going to go ahead and start getting ready to sand out the bottom and get the finishes going on it. And uh, you may have saw me use a spray here. I just used a little bit of water for the bottom because this sole is so dense that during the process of cutting out the channel here for the groove, it, um, it burns up the leather quite a bit. It, it burns it up in such a way where it's just harder for us to work with. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, for any cobblers that are watching, by the way, I just wanted to give a side note. The little washer that I slipped on here works awesome. I mean, it really, really helps it a lot because that was one of the problems. Um, when we use our house grade leather, it's softer than the JR sole. We don't need a washer like this on here, so it, it glides through just fine. But the JR soles are so dense that we have to apply a bit more pressure and sometimes it makes it harder with uh, the stopper here the little guide stopper that we have so just a side note for any cobblers that may be watching may come in handy for you so i'll go ahead and do the uh, other shoe off camera i'm gonna stick the shoe tree back into this one while i'm working on it all right so i did also forget i have to mark it up it's been it's been a hectic couple of weeks for me as these shoes have been taking me a little longer than I hoped for, unfortunately. I'm sorry guys, but uh, I did um, 
take our little punch here with our logo and put it towards the back of the heel right there. And I did a rough sanding for now on what's called our numb keg. It just spins around and this kind of gives us our rough area there. Now the rest of the sole, I am going to, of course, the section that's visible, I'm gonna sand out with our palm sander because it makes things a little bit smoother. Um, and then afterwards, I'll be able to rough up the back of the heel and everything so that we can adhere the new uh, heel base on there and everything. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. I do have to put on this face mask. This thing does get a little noisy, so I'll probably fast forward through most of this anyways. Um, plus, I can't really talk with the face mask on. So let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> All right, so got everything sent it out. I blew off all the dust already off camera, but uh, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding color. Now for this kind of shoe, I mean, you could go a lot of routes for finishing out the bottom. The gentleman said I could do whatever I want with it. So I'm gonna do one of my personal favorite looks, uh, especially because this has got the number eight uh, Cordovan color on there. Red and black are my personal pick always for this kind of color. I had a pair of elephant skin boots that were in the sim similar color there. It's got more of that wineish color. And I, I like the red. I love the red and then the black of course has to go out on the edges so that the red stitching that we're gonna put in here is gonna be more visible as well as on the outer edge it still looks a little more dressy in case somebody catches like a glimpse of the side of your shoe or something so that it doesn't stand out all bright red or anything like that. So I've got my Saphir, let's see this is number 89, Cherry. <clears throat> and I like that. I mean, this is my personal favorite look because it's uh, it looks like the red fades into the black nicely. And we we'll start out there in the middle. Some of you may have seen me do this kind of stuff in the past with a few other shoes and boots, but this is my personal favorite all the time. And if you have a request, if you want blue, I did it with a, with some blue ones as well, a pair of uh, Allen Edmonds. I did blue with black as well. We could do other colors too. If you want green, if you want purple. But for these, I, I definitely want, would prefer the red, it really, really seems to pop nicely. Okay. And again, I just like to put it kind of more towards the center there on the red. Set this one aside for just a second. And do the same with this one here. Uh, this one's turning out a little bit darker. This is one of the I guess you could say downsides with uh, natural leathers like this. No two same soul, no two soles are ever the same. One kind of may turn out darker, the other one may turn out a little bit lighter, and that's the case with these ones. Looks like the left foot is just a little bit darker than the right foot, but it does look like it's lighting up, lightening up a little bit better. Gotta enjoy the natural beauty and in, in nature and art. That's what brings out the beauty is the flaws. The little flaws, they actually do that. If you take uh, Picasso's painting, for example, if you were a professional artist and Picasso was just starting out, you would criticize the hell out of him. He did this wrong, he did this wrong, but years and years later, those little flaws and everything I would actually accentuate the beauty of everything. We're not machines, we're humans. We make errors. Nature does the same thing. Set this one aside to dry. And 
Now there are other things too that could be done. We can make the sole all black. We can make it a tan, a beige. You know, we can make it all red or all blue. Done a few pairs like that where they were all all blue as well. I personally like this one here. It's my favorite. Still have yet to do some other colors too. Most common colors are red and blue that everyone's after if anybody requests it. Still have a few other colors that I've yet to do like green. Did a pair in orange actually. It was orange and tan. And the tan was kind of um, a little hard to I guess you can say distinguish between the orange and the tan because the tan had kind of like that hue to it there we go what do you guys think I like it personally I don't know how you guys feel about it but that's one of my favorite looks right there because it's got kind of like a roughish look to it, but the red fades into the black very nicely in those spots. All right, so over here in our patch room at our outsole stitcher, we call it the curved needle because it's got a curved needle on it. And so we've got loaded in there at the top our red thread, which is actually going to end up being our bottom thread right here. And then black for the bottom right over here. So it's going to go ahead and get everything matched up because the shoe gets stitched upside down. And we'll go ahead and get started on this guy here. Let's see, make sure everything's lining up. Um, do one quick adjustment. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Take it slow on that one because it's definitely worn out in a few spots there on the weld, so I have to take it nice and easy. Clip this real quick. Oh, come on, scissors are starting to get worn out. All right, I don't know if you guys can see all that there. Not too bad. Yeah, I was wanting to slide off because the um, the welt again, it's it's a little more worn off. I was really close, even when I was trimming everything out, it was very close to the edges there. But got it to work out nicely. It happens um, with welt; it tends to wear out sometimes over time on the edges. Uh, due to the fact that the sides, they do get kind of nicked every now and then, but the toes, now the toes, they get the most wear because they always end up catching a lot of places. <clears throat> Luckily, this one, this one did pretty all right there. So, I'll go ahead and do the other one off camera since I'm running out of space and I don't have enough time to upload it all to my computer and then start up again. It's already well after hours here tonight, so... I gotta get this going. I'm gonna probably have to take care of the uppers at home with my little kit there, but 
I'll go ahead and continue on. So I'll see you back here in just a little bit. Or actually, yeah, we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, so we've got all the stitching taken care of. Now we're going to go ahead and run some of the brass clinch nails again in here. I already got some on that heel run. I've only got uh, five there so far because we got to hold the heel run down separately. Now we're going to go ahead and nail the back end of the heel because, again, this is, these are not uh, full 360 degree welted, and they usually aren't. Sorry about the noise, but I do have to hammer, so I'll, I'll just tune down the noise and not talk, but I'll go ahead and keep going. Okay, all right, I did forget to mention, of course. I sanded this out, I stand, sanded out the heel bases, got everything all finished up with marking it up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue it all up. I'll do this other one off camera, so I'm not wasting you guys' time too much longer on that. And then once I've got the heel bases on there, then I'll uh, make sure that everything's leveled out. I've got the old heel base here. Um, it's it's just cracking and ripping badly. You can see right there, this thing's rotted. Unfortunately, again, they, they use a fiber board on their heel bases, but we're gonna put a solid leather stacked heel base, which is a really good upgrade for these guys. So again, I'll go ahead and uh, continue on these and we'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, so I've got the heel base all built up on there and everything. I had to put a little extra to make sure everything's leveled out properly. Now we're going to go ahead and run the nails in. I did have to leave, unfortunately. It was starting to get a little late, and wife started calling and saying, where are you, where are you? So I had to, had to head out and leave these overnight. And, uh, too much workload, and it's starting to get a little busy for us here, so keep uh getting distracted with people coming in but anyways we're gonna go ahead and run some uh new some of these uh gripper nails it's just making sure everything's final tight they got these little rings on them once they go in they clinch down on all the material and they go through the top here sorry i got cut out but they go through the top here and into the sole so they don't go clear through all the way over here on this side but there were seven nails, and so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Start pre-punching them, usually with a little awl like that, uh, so the nails don't end up going all crooked on us or anything. And they're usually just eyeballed. They're not really measured out like too much or anything like that. Eyeballing it also helps to position in certain spots that uh, may have a tendency of coming up a little bit more. Sometimes these heel bases, they can just kind of slide up on you a little bit and start coming unglued over time. And it happens, it doesn't matter what kind of glue or nails you use, it's going to happen at some point or another that the heel base can start coming un undone. So I'm not going to talk down in this section because it's a lot of hammering and I'll turn down the volume there for you. Just gonna make sure everything's fine on the inside too, looking good. All right, there we go. So we've got the nails, all seven of them, six there, six there, and one in the middle on the back. Definitely don't ever put one in the middle on the front end there. I've seen a few places do that and it makes a nail stick up because this section right here is usually the thinnest point on any heel base and we don't want that to happen. But at this point I'm done with all the old ones with all the measurements and making sure it all fits. 
that goes in the trash. And we've got these uh, GTO top lift heels like this here that we're going to be putting on. Um, I did talk to a gentleman um, about it, but uh, we weren't going to be doing the JR heels. He wants to go for the all rubber ones. Now the all rubber ones compared to say a combination heel. Let me grab a couple. So this is a combination heel. It's got the leather and the rubber. This is the JR here. This is our house grade leather one, house grade one. And um, you know, they work fine, but the all rubber ones definitely do last longer. I mean, even though the JR is a premium, th these do tend to last as far as their rubber goes and the leather it lasts as long as the regular rubber ones do like this. But the problem is that, of course, the leather is glued onto this rubber section here. So after a period of time, there is a possibility that it may start coming unglued. Even though we have nails run through there, we end up putting some decorative looking nails there, but they also hold that leather down better. Um, so we, uh, we end up uh, having an issue with that kind of stuff where the leather starts coming unglued from the rubber. But the rubber is all one solid piece. It works out very well. Uh, wears nicely and cost wise it's usually more cost efficient to replace as well so we're going to go ahead and put these ones on there um, as far as rubber ones though i never like to run nails into them there's very very few times that i will run nails in through the top so after this top lift is on we run either wire nails or something else through the top very very rarely do i ever do that and that's strictly on say like a western boots or something with a much larger heel base on it um, and it's for people who tend to be very rough on those boots i mean some of those cowboys they can get up onto a tractor or you know even onto a horse saddle and catch that heel just enough where it just yanks the whole thing off with so much force but on a dress shoe i don't think you're going to be riding a tractor or riding a horse with dress shoes so definitely don't want to put nails on there the other thing is the nails do tend to scratch up floors with uh, the jr or the other ones when we put the nails on there we use a rounded brass um, brass headed nail on here so it tends to wear very evenly it doesn't become very sharp or anything and it's very durable um, so it works great with these on a rubber we can't put those on because they don't sit deep enough so the head sticks out just a little bit too much and has a tendency to catch and start to get sharp after a certain period of time and can start scratching up just about everything you walk on and that's why we never try to put any kind of nails if you request nails in your rubber heel we could do that but i'd advise against it for you but anyways, before I keep talking too long, too much longer, we're gonna go ahead and glue up the heels on here. Um, I'll do a rough trimming and then I'll meet you guys back over when uh, we're gonna start doing the whole edging and everything. So we'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, so I've got everything sanded out and trimmed up nicely and I put the edge dressing on these guys already. So now we're gonna go ahead and varnish them up. We've got our varnish wheel here. It's basically stacked leather that melts the waxes nicely into the sole and heel base. And we've got a nylon brush over here on this side that kind of helps even it out. And then we buff it up on this horsehair brush right here. Um, now, it's been a chaotic day here for me today, so it's been a little little rough i guess you can say trying to get any work done whatsoever so i'm going to go ahead and do the uh, do the edging on this guy i'm going to take the rest of it and uh, you know treat the uppers and everything at home i'll go ahead and do a separate video on the upper treatment for these uh, just because there's a lot of people out there that want to know how to take care of and maintain shell cordovan let me just adjust this just a little bit for you guys but um, yeah, if you guys want to check out that video, I'll leave a link in the description for that. Um, just because this video could get a little too long in that case. But we'll go ahead and get started now.
looking a bit shinier there. Let's see where the other one is. Oh, there it is. If I could. Yeah. Quite a bit of a difference there. Guess I gotta buff a little bit more in a few spots there, but kind of get the idea there. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish out the other one really quickly. I gotta buff this one up just a little bit more in just a couple of spots, and then I'll go ahead and take these home and continue working on the uppers. And then, of course, we still gotta glue the um, the new insole in there as well. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of, and uh, we'll see you guys back here in just a little while. All right, so I'm back here again. I've got everything kind of finished out now. New soles. Got a fingerprint on there or something. Okay, and then we got the uppers treated. We did a separate video for the upper treatment on that. If you wanted to check that out, I'll leave a link down in the description. I like it. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I really like the that kind of look where it's kind of black around the edges, rough red there and then the red stitching you know i would have liked some jr heels on there but well, with the rubber ones they tend to last a little bit better and grip better too but if you guys have any questions um or comments don't don't hesitate leave them down below uh you're also able to give us a call too if uh if you need as well our all our information is on our website cobblersplus.com if you're local in the Denver area, you could always stop by too, but if you're not, um, give us a call or send us a message and we'd be more than happy to help with whatever you need. If you're wanting to have us work on any of your items, shoes, boots, belts, purses, even jackets too, uh, we do a lot of different leather work. You're more than welcome to ship it in or bring it in. If you go to our uh, mail-in order tab on our website, you can follow the instructions and then ship it out. We'll service your items and ship them back to you once they're ready. But these are all done and we're going to go ahead and fingerprint thing is going to bug me but we're going to go ahead and uh, package them up and ship them back over to the owner and uh, have him enjoy his shoes now oh i did forget to also mention that we did get the insole glued in there the new one i did have to trim it down a little bit because it was a little long actually so and i didn't want to cover up that made in usa section too much and it's kind of funny that they shipped that out but thank you to alden for shipping out all that to me so definitely appreciate that that you guys uh sent those heel pads i'm definitely gonna have to try to give you guys a or send you guys a message and see if i can get a hold of some more of these for future repairs but again don't forget to subscribe and we'll just see you next time